Hi Kargi, hi Zubin, hi Priyanka, hi Smriti, hi Ankita. Good to have you all here. Hi Dhaval, good evening. Hi Dhaval, good to see everyone together. Absolutely, good to see you Zubin. Hi everyone, a very good evening. I'll just like, uh, yeah. Almost, I've seen like maybe 19 or 18 participants have already joined, so I can just start off with the thing. So, thanks everyone for like joining and being a part of this pre college program Gateway to UG Education webinar hosted by Tiana Care Counseling. Uh, my name is Purjiba, and I'll be the coordinator for this evening's webinar. So, before we start, of like with the main session i would just like to give a little bit of introduction of our company dcc so just hold on for a second yeah so uh just a little bit of introduction for dcc uh dcc is a certified global admission advisory career resource management and desperate vendors founded by like experienced and passionate individuals with top degrees in your respective fields and we have got support from like 200 plus mentors across 50 plus career areas who have like deep industrial knowledge on their career areas. And we also provide career resource management for schools and colleges, including teachers training and resource mapping to support students in their career goals and higher education admissions. Uh, we have also worked with uh, more than 100 plus schools uh, with the students, yeah. And our admission advisory includes like end-to-end -end services like career aptitude days, early advising, profile and resume building, test preparation, and admission guidance with visa prep for 1,200 plus universities across 12 plus countries and achieving more than $8.5 million in scholarships for candidates. And here is a little bit of like our media coverage uh, Diana has been covered by NTTV, This Free Express, The Hindu Times, The Indi Indians Today. So what do we provide? What is our services? I'll just give you a little bit of thing. Uh, like I've just skipped a part because in order to save our time, I've just skipped a little bit of that introduction video. So I'll just go ahead directly here. Uh, we help out students with like life coach, mentoring. Uh, and college application guidance. We also help out the students with their summer school application guidance and their dice prep coachings like SID, APs, TOEFL, GRE, GMATES, etc. And we also uh, give support for their extracurricular activities like we give them this kind of like Trinity, YCM, and we also help them out with all these loans, visas, and travel for an exchange. So, uh, just a little bit highlight of the sessions for today. This is the highlight sessions for the day. So just hold on for a second. Are you are you having a, a problem seeing that slide? Because I think we all can. Yeah, so yeah, it shows... just hold on. Okay. I can, yeah, I can see. So you. the first is that we'll talk about the agendas and overviews. And the factors to consider. And thirdly, we'll talk about the impact of UG admissions. And fourth, we have uh, the summer school across, like we'll talk about the summer school across USA, UK, Europe, and India. And finally, the most interesting and the most exciting part is that today uh, we have joined with us like this uh, five top Indian universities. Like uh, they, they are from like Flame, Ashoka, Laksha, Atlas, and Intuit Lab. So they'll be presenting us the summer school programs in their universities. And then I'll just give a little bit of introduction of our uh, founder, uh, Mr. Double Meda. He's the CEO and founder of Close Star Tech Private Limited and TNA Care Counseling. He is an expert care coach for like more than two, 20 years of experience. And he's a NACAT member. He is also a Berson and UCLA ex certified counselor, certified in college advising. And he has also done his studies from University of Columbia, U University of Michigan and Upper, and did his executive MBA from Cornell University. 
Right now, he's serving as the current president of UMI Indian Alumni Association. So without further ado and without taking much of time, I'd like to hand over the mic to Mr. Tawal Mehta. Hi, Puchiba. Thank you so much for that uh, quick walkthrough. And um, very excited to see all of you all here. We've got um, you know um, a number of you all um, attending today's webinar. Uh, lovely to see that, that you all have taken some time out. I'm really excited to also see a lot of university representatives uh, from Flame, Atlas, Ashoka, um, from Intuit, uh, from Glaksha. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, and I think, um, you know, now that the board exams and school exams are winding down, uh, I know there's a week left in some of the others. Uh, we thought this would be a nice time to talk about summer programs, even though we have spoken about this in January. Um, you know, uh, this is a time when all students look towards what's going to happen in summer, right? So whether you're in the 9th, 10th, 11th, and then, you know, of course, in the 12th, um, you know, summer programs are, are an exciting way for you uh, to, uh, you know, to realize, um, you know, your options for, for undergraduate. And so it's, um, it's good for us to actually look at them. Um, I'm going to quickly share my screen and uh, allow us to go through a few options that we have. Give me a quick second here. So uh, Pushiba has already gone through the agenda and um, um, what I want to introduce is, you know, we have a website where we put a lot of details already on each one of these summer programs. Um, a great resource, I would say, where you can actually spend some time to uh, look at some of the different, uh, you know, pre-college summer school programs, as, as we would call it. Um, when is sort of the best time to start? Uh, how long should a summer school be? Right from, say, one week to, you know, seven weeks. Um, and so we've sort of mentioned, you know, how should you look at these summer programs, right? How do you choose a country? How do you choose a program? Um, one, depending on your interest and goals. Um, you know, second is the duration of time. Uh, what is what is it that you really want to study? What is it that excites you, right? So suppose, think about it that, you know, you want to take something uh, within physics or something within mathematics, or you want to know what psychology is. Um, you want to know how business or entrepreneurship works. You know, summer is a great way to take some of these short courses, you know, um, even anything to do with creativity, right? It could be even, you know, performance, art, so it could be, create, you know, it could be design. Uh, there are so many programs available today. So what we've done is on this site, we've, we've put more than about 70 to 80 different programs. And it's sort of listed by, you know, each country as well. And you'll see more details further down if you have an interest in a certain career area as well, right? So if you just click on it, you'll get more information. Um, and it also takes you to that page. Um, so, you know, if, if I had to see this, and I would say, I want to see what's happening at Cambridge or what's happening at Imperial, um, you know, or what's happening at John Hopkins, by that interest type, you can actually go to that site. So that's what we have tried to do, um, is try to make it a little bit more interactive, engaging, um, and and hopefully you can make the most of it. Um, we have we have tried in country-wise programs also to list down the programs, and you know like Ashoka has two, you know the YSP and the Horizon, which they'll talk about, um, and so it it makes it more interesting, more engaging for you. We've captured a bit of a summary at the end as well, that talks about this in terms of when are the sessions. Uh, universities do tend to have these sessions also, uh, you know, from a certain term to a certain term. So it's important for you all to see that. Also deadlines. And I know that, you know, university representatives are here, so they will actually talk about their deadlines as well. Um, what can you do um, in terms of the application process? Um, do, do you require recommendations from your teachers? Do you require an essay? Uh, they will go through that as well. Um, so let me go back here to you know, why summer school, right? So, as I said, exploring areas of interest, concentration, building knowledge, skills, 
supports your university application because you can really talk about what you did there, what you learned. You can cover that within your essay, within what activity you did. Uh, it also helps you make new friends, you know, a great way to realize what someone else is doing, right? So, you know, if you've just always been in Bombay or you've always been in Delhi and you've not really, you know, seen how students across other schools work out, I think when you go to these summer schools, you really get an idea. If you go to global summer schools, you get a different perspective on things. Um, so that's one advantage. Um, uh, you know, you experience what college life is going to be, what kind of courses you could potentially get. So great introduction. Um, again, how do you choose interest and goals? What matters? Um, there are some summer school programs which are also competitive, right? So where if you think that you really want to learn math or physics in greater level of detail, or, you know, suppose there are concepts that you already know basics to when you really want to learn advanced. So there are such programs which are also competitive. You can actually look at the list of that and apply for those. Where you'll probably see the acceptance rates are fairly low because a number of them actually apply for them. Now, let me go ahead and just talk about a little bit about your know, requirements for these, right? And these vary. So some of these colleges will say that we would want students to come from the ninth grade onwards. Most of them are going to say that. Some of them are even taking eighth graders, right? So I've seen programs like John Hopkins, which allow you eighth graders to come in. Um, I think here the Indian universities will also answer and tell you that is it okay if you come in the eighth? But typically I've seen that ninth grade onwards, you really see a lot more engagement because you kind of understand, okay, this is what I can, I can maximize the time that I'm spending in summer school when you're from your ninth grade onwards. Okay. So that means, and, and let the, you know, university re representatives also tell you, what if I'm finishing the eighth, going into the ninth, is it okay if I apply, right? Is there an age requirement? I know outside, if you look at certain universities, they have a requirement if you're boarding with them, if you're living with them, that you need to be 16 years of age. Um, but that might not apply here. That's something that you will actually learn about. So one is there's an age requirement. Two is everyone has an application process. You need to go to the website. You really need to research, right? So when I, for instance, open up a university page like University of Chicago, you know, there's so much information on that. And I want students to understand that you really need to spend time to actually go over it. So they have something called pre-college. You'll go down, you'll see what is an emotion versus what is a pre-college connect. It explains that very well. It says the summer takes advantage of rich educational resources as a residential program. Pre-college connect says this is both online and in person. So it says this is a two-week online and a one-week in-person, right? So you have to read up on what this is and also what are the options when you click on it. So something which I would want you all to spend some time and understand, if you go to the website, you get a lot more information fairly quickly. Uh, spend some time doing that. Okay. Um, LORs. They are optional in, in the Indian context, and I'm sure the universities, I will tell you, some of them say you don't even need them. Right? Some of them say it's optional if you want to give them. Um, but having a high school transcript definitely helps your application. If you have a resume put in place and you are able to submit it, I don't think it's a requirement, but it's good. Whatever other activities you're doing to mention in the application, it's a good thing to do. Abroad, if you see most of these, they want more information about you. Uh, most of them will ask you for a recommendation from a teacher, especially the competitive ones. Some of them will even ask you that you submit an ILTS you know, score. Now, if you're from an ICSC, ISC, or from a CBSC background, maybe they want you to give an ILTS or a TOEFL. But if you are, and they might not necessarily ask you for a PSAT until it's a competitive process, you know, a program. What is a PSAT? It's a preliminary SAT. That's, that's you know, uh, an exam by the college board. So you must have heard of the SAT, the Scholastic Aptitude Test. And this is just the preliminary SAT, which is the PSAT, which is out of 1520. Now, it, and typically it happens twice in a year in October and March. Uh, it's a good idea to study for it at least, you know, four to five months ahead of time. Um, if you want to give that exam for any competitive courses. Um, and remember that after you've done that, after you've given your TOEFL, if you're applying to some of these universities, 
they have given yeah. something yeah. called waivers on their website. They tell you that you know, suppose you're from an IGCS, you've been there for four years. You you know, you can ask the school to provide a letter, and that might be enough. You might not need to be able, to, you know, you don't need to submit a profile or an ILTS form. Um, also, talking a little bit about what you've already done, why do you want to explore, uh, you know, this area? Why do you want to go to summer school? I think that's important. Whether you're applying to Indian universities or programs, or you know, those abroad, um, putting a visa for those programs outside, putting some kind of a resume, really very helpful. Um, it makes you think a little bit more. I always ask students to put it together, and of course, you need an academic transcript, right? So that means your one or two years course is what they typically look at. Uh, I think in the Indian context, a one-year you know, scores are good. And I think that universities, representatives here will also confirm that. So again, going through the admission tips, reviewing your requirements, right? So what is the criteria? What is it that you're looking for? Are you applying to the right program? Uh, Ashoka has the YSP and the Horizons, which is an online you know, program, which they will talk about more. Um, you know, one is knowing what it is, uh, you know, what are those requirements online, uh, you know, by making your application. So make an application, go to the website, right? When you click on it and it says, you know, apply, make sure that you, you're actually applying. It says start your application. So, you know, here, suppose it gives you what is the deadline, right? So it says, this is the deadline, go there, make sure that you selected, you know, that you are actually in that, time period it says tick you know this and then you actually it here in this case it's giving you a call checklist uh, it says personal profile it says transcript test scores financial aid supplementary essays writing sample you know um, letter of recommendation application fee um, if there's you know any other instructions they're sort of giving it to you and then if you want to still see an FAQ you can actually go and you can see an FAQ Right. So um, when you start the application form, you need to complete the application form, add whatever it is that they're, they're asking. Typically, recommendations is where they ask for the name of the teacher, the email ID, and they can contact them separately. Um, you know, again, so just important to know. Um, you have to showcase your strengths. So from your essay is where you can really showcase your strengths, your personal statement. Uh, any other achievements, if they have a box there to actually provide that, do write about that. Um, letter of recommendations, you know, try and reach out to those teachers. So suppose you're taking something in physics or psychology. Try to reach out to your teachers who have seen that interest in you. You have discussed that with them. And they will write a recommendation to you and, and, and write that across. And let the admissions officer know how you've been a good student and why you really want you know, why should you be joining that program? Why would they recommend you for that program? Okay. Um, as I said, standardized testing scores where required. Um, and then submit the application after you review it, right? So check for accuracy. To make sure there are no mistakes that you're actually making. Um, this is where, you know, I know times you need that support. Uh, and that's where we are there for. You know, you can come back to us. You can ask us questions. You can take an appointment and say, okay, I need to understand. I've shortlisted these few, you know, summer programs. You know, can I discuss it with you? Can we understand what else we could take up, right, as an option? Um, that's what we're here for. That's what the university representatives are here for, is to clear your doubts, right, and tell you about how this would be a good fit for you. Um, now, in particular, you know, we said U.S., U.K., um, you know, we, we've highlighted Europe and then India. So, you know, I just gave you an example. So now if I just go, I mean, I went to University of Chicago, but um, the one thing with the US is that, you know, the deadlines are, are fairly, you know, many university deadlines are typically over by 1st of March. So you have to start a little early for US university applications. Some of them might be still open. Uh, so like this one that you see, um, with Georgetown University is actually open until May 15th. Is they seem that that's the final, but many of them will see early deadlines. So let's you see January 31st is an early deadline. It could be some rolling admissions. Um, and then it tells you what are your steps to complete your application. So 300 to 500 word essay, letter of recommendation, $50 application fee, transcript, international students, this is what your requirement is, right? So fairly simple Then it says, okay, apply now. You click on it. 
and then you know it it takes you to that portal where you finish the application process. This is fairly standard across, right? Um, you you decide to put in all the information, and then you start working on, uh, you know, completing it. So um, again, you know, I think I've gone through why and what's really you see in the U.S. is also a fair bit of programs which are very structured so that means it's very specific to something that you want to discover yourself um, that's what i would say u.s university um you know summer programs are like uh we've shortlisted a couple of them so maybe it's cornell harvard brown georgetown you know university of california berkeley Haas has a specific program um you know which is to do with you know um high school entrepreneurship for instance so if that's something that you you know are looking at it says you know, we only take 50 high school students from around the globe to spend two weeks, you know, for instance. So, um, you know, there are specific programs and that's interesting. And that's what I would say you will actually find here as well. So if you go back to our site and you want some more information and you want something specific, you can click on it and you'll actually find those programs. Right. Um, so I would say spend some time looking at it and you'll probably discover quite a few programs that, that, you know, might be useful to you, right? Um, they're kind of put across the board um, and and they're not only, you know, universities that you see and, and it's not just specific to, uh, you know, just the top universities. We try to include as many as we can. And if you have some that you know and we haven't included, please write to us. Okay. Um, happy to do that. And... Um, so if you and if you have any questions, of course, please put them, you know, on uh, the text box, and you know, we'd be happy to take them. Uh, now, going through, you know, summer, you know, colleges in the, in the UK, again, they seem to be slightly shorter than the US. US has the option of, you know, so so there are there's something called four credits. You get credit at university level, and that's why those are seven week courses. Uh, but the shorter courses, they could be a one week, two week, three weeks, or four weeks. Those are shorter ones. So you could choose that. Um, most of the Indian university summer programs that you are going to see and you're going to hear about, um, you know, all fantastic, great way to engage and interact. They tend to be slightly smaller. Uh, so they are about 10 days, so five, seven, 10 days, 15 days at the most. Um, you are not going to find a four credit program here. Um, what four credit is that you can actually get those credits counted towards college. So the exploration the, you know, the, the there's a difference in terms of what uh, you are going to get when you are going to college where you want to specifically just study physics and or introduction to engineering um, or take something specific, right? Uh, because here there's a little bit more of a different focus on the liberal education. So you're actually learning. So that's why it's like really figuring out what that fit is, right? Um, and summer schools in the UK, again, they tend to be shorter in terms of duration. So two, three weeks, um, you get, you know, a, a pretty good summary of what you would be doing. Um, so even if I look at, say, King's College, um, and you click on that, you'll actually see that it gives you, again, you know, something that's um, a little bit more. So it gives you the topics here, says business and management, health and technology, human anatomy and physiology, psychology, global health, International political economy, London cityscape, London life, finance and financial markets, and medical application and 3D printing. So they've decided this right now. Um, these do keep changing as well, you know, from, from year to year is what I have seen. All right. Um, so that's one. And going back now to um, Europe. So Europe, again, very unique. Uh, what we have tried to do is you know, capture programs from across Europe. So whether it's Netherlands, Germany, France, or Spain, you're going to see a number of programs and they again tend to be fairly short. So we have seen somewhere between one week to say four weeks, you know, of programs. Um, and they typically come in these two cohorts. So your summer has cohort one, cohort two. Um, so typically April, May, June, July, um, or we would say May. So in the US, it's more May, June, um, you know, July, August, four months. That's summer. Uh, some of them is slightly earlier in Europe. It's slightly earlier. You'll see even something around, uh, you know, so it, it might be closer to the end of April, but you'll see mostly May, as you can see, start dates being even later 
uh, in sort of May. So let's say May, June, July, August, anything outside India, um, and even most of these Indian programs will be around them and will have two cohorts. Now, again, summer school in India, we have shortlisted the programs. There are plenty of them. Uh, and we've got the representatives here. So, of course, I would want them to talk a little bit more about the programs. Uh, but you also have this program called Promise, um, you know, in India, uh, which is, you know, they provide a full scholarship to actually go to the program. Uh, you know, it's based out of Bangalore. Um, and, you know, it's more, uh, you know, for do, to do with mathematics. And if that's something that, you know, you want to do, it's it's something that they have, you know, collaborated with the Indian Institute of Sciences uh, in Bangalore. Um, it's, a, it's a competitive application. Uh, but this is just to give you a sense that even there are a lot more programs that you will see here. Um, and we're happy to help you, you know, understand them, shortlist them and work through them. Um, so, you know, I'm not going to take too much time now and I'm going to try and make sure that we can spend some time with the representatives who are here and have taken time out uh, to talk about their individual programs. Um, and I've seen, you know, a number of our students who've taken summer programs. It's helped them immensely build their story um, because they've, they've genuinely used that time period to really explore the coursework, to make friends, uh, to understand what they might want to study after. Um, and so that's what we've seen here. Uh, Arnav, who went to Harvard to do his summer uh, school, he did a four credit, seven week program, is now at you know University of Chicago. Uh, Avia, who went to Cornell, um, is now completing this year, his uh, study at uh, UBC. Um, Arushi is, um, you know, who went to the the Flame Summer School Program uh, is on a full scholarship this year uh, at Flame, uh, you know, for the four-year program. And Nishika, who, um, you know, went to, uh, you know, a, a summer program at Brown, um, then did her undergraduate at UCL and is now at Imperial studying her master's. So, you know, a, a lot of things, but I feel most of the students... Um, and, and we've got a number of students every year that go to Ashoka, go to Flame, uh, you know, go to Plaksha, go to, uh, uh, you know, Atlas, uh, go to Ecol. They all do this. And so it's not necessary for you to step out. It depends on what your goals are. And I feel that, you know, a lot of the programs in India are very accessible, uh, very well planned. You know, they have residential portions um, except Ecol. Um, so I think, um, you know, let each one of them tell you more about it. And, uh, you know, as we move along, I'd appreciate if you all can fill up the feedback form at the end of it. We'd love to hear from you all. Um, and, you know, I will move over to, you know, let the, the each each of the, you know, university officials to talk about their programs and tell you more. So I'm going to invite uh, Gargi first from Flame University uh, Gargi, um, if you want to share the screen, I think you should be able to. Uh, if you want me to make you the host, let me know. Hello, everyone. Just trying to share my screen here. Please excuse me. I'm a little um, not very good with this, but okay. let me try. So I did not take much of your time. Can everybody hear me? Am I audible? Okay, great. And um, I don't have very many things to show you. I'll just give you a very small introduction. Um, I think we have a small group of students here. Um, so just to introduce, see, Flame University is one of the pioneering liberal institutions in India. We are one of the only universities um, where we have been doing the summer immersion program for a very long time. This is meant for people who uh, are above the ages of 14, generally, people who are in the grades of 9th, 10th, 11th or 12th. And uh, it is meant for them to get an introduction into the subjects that we offer and into what they can do in the future as well. So just to give you an idea, it is not going to be maybe, you know, okay, um, what is psychology or introduction to psychology? It will be how has psychology how has COVID affected our collective psychology, for example? You know, things like that. So it is all, always going to be something that um, awakens your interest in a certain subject. It is not going to be a classroom where you're just sitting in front of, you know, a lecturer and the lecturer is just lecturing you for the last um, an hour. It is not going to be like that. It's a very um, inclusive session for everyone. So uh, we have two batches. One is in May, one is in June. 
and just take care of this. Yeah, these are some of the subjects that we'll offer. So the students don't have the option to choose what subjects they can take. They will be studying all of these. So these will be basically, um, you know, one hour, two hour modules. And these will be taught by the same professors who are teaching our undergraduate students as well. So this is an opportunity that should not be missed. Um, yeah, the dates I was talking about. Can everybody see this? It's clear, right? Okay, great. So as I mentioned, the, this, the age criteria is the biggest thing that the student has to be aware of. They have to be over 14 years of age on the date of the uh, program. It's a very simple process. You can apply online on the website. Um, I will also leave this link on the chat section if anybody wants to uh, have a look. So it's a very simple application form. You leave your details there. You have to write an SOP. And after that, there'll be, um, you don't have, there's no application process as such. You don't have to, there's no entrance test or interview or anything like that it's first come first serve. the fee is 50,000 all inclusive it's a 10 day program and uh, it will include your food and lodging and um, the tuition fee and the event expenses for those 10 days become and drop has to be arranged by the parents um, we have accommodation on campus since we are a residential campus anyway so the rooms are going to be twin sharing ac rooms with attached washrooms and of course there'll be four meals a day just to mention so if um if you have time do we have two two minutes of time maybe just to share a video i think that should be fine i think we have to do okay let me see okay this is also there on the website is it audible yeah, yeah, we can hear you. take a look at the campus and the courses offered here and it did exactly that. It showed me what a liberal education is and how it feels like to be a student at Flame. My experience at Flame was unlike any other experience I have ever been to. Joseph has given me a really nice opportunity to enrich myself and get new experiences. So I feel like it's a very benefiting program if you're a high school student or you're just going into high school. It's a very yeah. unique experience. I've never actually gone through any college courses or anything of the sort. So this was just an overall very enjoyable experience. Uh, my experience was wonderful. I loved to be here and I would love to come here again and again. The best thing I liked about Flame was how it was so easy to communicate with the professors here ask them anything, anything about the campus, anything about the subjects that they teach. It was just very comfortable. It was a very uh, casual interaction. And that's something. Yeah, I think uh, this is also there on the website. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks this is also you. there on the website. So you can also uh, just go at the website, have a look. I'll leave, my, um, I'll leave the links here and my details here as well. Um, I, yeah, I think we are done with this. Um, uh, are we taking questions now or are, are we taking the questions? I think in? later, so maybe I'll just ask great. those who are here to kind of put your questions in. That would be great. And thanks, Zubin, to, you know, just like you put your details. I think if everyone can, that'll be, you know, that'll be fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> All right, handing it over to you. Thank you. So now I'll invite the Ashoka team. Um, I know we have both, uh, you know, the uh, YSP and the Horizon team. Um, so over to you, Ankita. Thank you so much, Dhawar. I seem to have lost my voice to a very bad throat infection. So I'll have my colleague Paritos take you through the presentation Absolutely. instead. <laughs> but, Absolutely. I'm here, but I'm here for any questions if anybody has them. Okay. Thanks for being here. I hope you get better. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Paritosh. work as part of the Ashoka Horizons team. Um, I'm just going to share my screen in a second. And uh, if everyone would be open to putting the cameras on, we'd really appreciate it. Uh, but obviously, no pressure. Can you see the screen? Yeah, we can. We can. Okay. So... 
All right. So um, Ashoka Horizons is part of the Office of High School Programs at Ashoka University. We have two offerings for high schoolers. One is the Young Scholars Program, which I think is um, kind of a well-known name at this point. And you know, my colleague Nancy will present about that in a minute. Um, it's an on-campus program. And Horizons, on the other hand, is an online program for high school students. Now, when we say the word online courses, we typically think of something um, like a MOOC, something that's offered on edX or that's offered on Coursera, and um, not something that's live and interactive. Um, and that's, I think, what makes the Ashoka Horizons courses very different from many things that are available in the online space. These are live, interactive, small cohort classrooms um, in which school students can explore particular subjects or skills that they're interested in. Um, they're, of course, certified. And um, all these Horizons courses that we're offering are offered on a particular um, format, which is that it's four weekends, um, two hours each on Saturday and Sunday. And um, these are consecutive weekends. Um, we have some courses in May and June. So I'll just take you through what we've got as well. Um, before we get there, just wanted to highlight a few um, really unique experiences that make Horizons courses what they are. One is the faculty that leads them. Um, we have Ashoka faculty, we have faculty from outside Ashoka, and we also have industry leaders. I think overall, we try to bring in people who are really passionate about teaching, especially high schoolers, and who have a blend of research experience and also some practical knowledge. Um, we have a lot of peer discussions, um, group, group, small group class uh, discussions is kind of what makes Horizons really special. So if you do a Horizons course, you will get to talk a lot. You will get to meet a lot of people, although online, and sometimes you might even work, get to work with them on projects. Um, obviously, that covers a third point as well. A lot of the work that you will do in Horizons courses will be working on projects. So you leave the class with something tangible as well, something that you can talk about um, in your application. So you're not only you can you talk about sort of what it's like to learn these things in a classroom and from a professor, but you also get to talk about something you build. Um, and finally, we also have teaching fellows who are advanced undergraduates um, and graduate students who are appointed in our program specifically to help you clear doubts, um, catch up with any concepts that you might have not understood. Uh, so we truly try to make it quite personalized. Um, these are the courses that we're very excited to offer this May and June. Um, they cover a range of subjects and skills. And, um, you know, we, we really created a portfolio that we thought would cater to some interest of many students. Um, so I guess take your pick. And of course, um, you know, if you want to do two courses, that's possible as well, as long as they don't both fall in the same um, time period. The ones in the top row are being offered from May 18th, which is a Saturday, until June 9th, which is a Sunday, and June 15th and until June 7th, July 7th, sorry, for the courses at the bottom. All of this is again available on our website. Um, so I'm gonna put the links to our website um, in, the, in the chat as well in just a moment. Um, really quickly over our faculty, these are some of the faculty who are offering the courses in the coming um, round in May and June. Just wanted to highlight a few things. Um, you know, Ashoka has kind of developed this reputation of being a university that's very, very strong at what we sometimes call the liberal arts. Um, and we associate that with the humanities and social sciences. Um, Ashoka, of course, now is really building out its science research capacities, improving, including PhD programs in science and things like that. Alok Bhattacharya, who is, is the head of the biology department and a head of that, and the head of one of the heads involved in that expansion as well. Um, he's won multiple awards, private, national, international, public as well. And um, he will be teaching the biology course. Um, and another name really quickly, Kritika Bhattacharji. Um, she uh, regularly just teaches the um, foundation course in academic writing to all undergraduates who come into Ashoka. So she's particularly interested in teaching the youngest student group. Um, so she's a great, great teacher. Um, and she's also an actor and a theater performer and a playwright. So she also has that kind of blend of um, academic experience, teaching experience and um, non-academic practical experience. Um, and she's teaching the critical thinking course. So I'll just leave you with these few dates um, for May, June courses. These are the course dates. Um, the application deadline is May 4th um, at the end of the day. And for the June, July courses, um, the courses will run from June, 6, June 15th to July 7th, and the deadline is June 1st. Um, so apply early to secure your seat because this, they're filling up and we really will keep the cohort small. 
Um, if we don't, then you won't get to speak in class and then the class will become worse. So it's it's really important for us to keep the cohort small. Um, so with that, I'd love to turn it over to Nancy and I'll keep putting the links in the chat for you to see later. Uh, thanks, Paratosh. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Nancy and I'm going to quickly talk about the Young Scholars Program. I hope I'm audible and visible to everyone. Okay, so um, I think uh, Paratosh, uh, you know, spoke uh, very correctly about uh, what Ashoka University is at this point of time. And while we definitely specialize in the liberal arts uh, education, we have really uh, expanded our portfolio and we have expanded into sciences, but also into computer science, uh, also into things like entrepreneurship and social impact and um, this is the expansion that actually, you know, reflects in our YSP uh, this year. So the Young Scholars Program, which is actually now in its ninth year, is bigger and better than ever. Uh, and it starts by, you know, um, this whole this whole new addition we have done, which is to offer it twice. So traditionally till last year, YSP was only offered in May, but now we are also offering it in June. And it's really, you know, a response to so many of our students who wanted to come but couldn't come because they had exams in May or didn't have vacations in May, different boards, different states. So, you know, we have really listened to them and we've added a June session. We are very excited for it. Um, and the program is a residential certified program program. Um, a lot of our alum and I'm, I'll quickly show you a video also which has which has been you know produced by our YSP alum from last year but our alum has always told us that the Young Scholars Program has helped them make some of the most important decisions of their life which is which subject to choose which college to go to and what is a potential career option for them uh, and this time we have five programs, unlike till last year when we only had three offerings, we have five offerings this time. Uh, YSP Foundation Program, which is really our flagship program. It is based on the foundation courses at Ashoka University. It this, this program really covers that foundational, that fundamental knowledge that you need to have no matter which discipline you choose to study later, what career path you choose to study later, we will study things like mind and behavior. And no matter whether you're a physicist or a dancer or a painter or a data analyst, understanding what shapes your own behavior and choices, understanding how groups work is going to be relevant for all of you. So the YSP Foundation program is really focusing on that kind of language, those thinking styles, what is quantitative thinking, what is computational thinking, no matter I may be a literature, literature student, but I can't shy away from the fact that literature may also have a digital future and digital humanities is something that, you know, literature will, will fall into eventually. So those are the kind of things we'll do in the YSP Foundation program. It's really the flagship program. It's really the best of Ashoka for, for our high schoolers. Then we have YSP Frontiers of Science, again, following the Ashoka model of science, which is very, very research led, very contemporary, very, you know, cutting edge, very thinking about what is the next thing that's going to happen in science, what is the future of science, and we are interested in making that future, we are interested in building that future. So that is the, you know, whole philosophy behind the program thinking about how is healthcare being transformed by AI or how surgery being transformed by robotics, for example, or how, how to, to fight climate change. Disciplines such as biology, chemistry, and even behavioral sciences need to come together and only then can we think of a solution. So those kind of things are going to be a part of YSP Computer Science, uh, sorry, YSP Frontiers of Science, YSP Tech Data and Computer Science, again, a totally hands-on a workshop led program where we are going to really think about technology as a way to make our lives better technology as a way to make the world better so what are the technological solutions to say financial inclusion or financial literacy what are technological solutions or data solutions to problems of governance problems of security data privacy and so on and so forth 
YSP Entrepreneurship Leadership and Impact is one of the new programs we have launched this year. We are very excited for it. Entrepreneurship is one of the most popular subjects that students choose to minor in at Ashoka because they can minor in uh, entrepreneurship at Ashoka during their undergrad. And this is a completely practitioner-led program where we are going to talk going to talk about what really is entrepreneurial mindset and why is it important no matter which career you choose. Today, you need to have an entrepreneurial mindset. Today, you need to be a leader no matter where you go. And also thinking about the idea of social impact, how can we build meaningful uh, social impact ventures, sustain them, um, and really, you know, make uh, the world a better place for all of us. Uh, and the fifth program, which is again one of the two new programs, YSP Economics, Policy and Society, really brings uh, into conversation different disciplines of social sciences with policy. So what happens when, uh, you know, sociological knowledge, for example, becomes a part of policy making? What kind of policies can be made if academicians actually were a part of that policy making group or the policy making process. So we will be again here thinking about things like, um, you know, uh, how is policy po policy impact measured? How how do different disciplines interact with that impact? Um, and, and many, many workshops on critiquing policy, uh, we will have, uh, we, are, we are planning to have a debate. We are planning to have events like MUN in this, in this YSP. And YSP Advance, where you can actually uh, club YSP Foundation program with any of, you know, um, the other four programs. But YSP is not just about academics. We are uh, equally interested in the co-curricular aspect and we take our fun very, very seriously. So while the program is taught by Ashoka faculty, who are truly the global leading faculty, uh, we also have fun and sports activities. All sports activities uh, are supervised by coaches at Ashoka. Uh, students make friends for life. Uh, there are collaborative project modules uh, every day. No matter which program you choose for two hours, you will work on projects every day. And on the last day, we will have a demo day. Uh, there are 21st century skill workshops, how to write your college essay, um, what is design thinking and creativity and how can you, you know, practice it in your everyday life? Um, how to really manage your stress and not, you know, really get pressured by this whole feeling of uh, FOMO, uh, other networking and collaborative uh, opportunities where you actually get to talk to uh, Ashoka faculty, but also Ashoka students, Ashoka UGs, Ashoka PhDs. Um, and really, you know, understand um, um, what inspired them to study at Ashoka or to, you know, just ask your questions. So that is the program I'm also going to put in. Um, I'm also going to put in the uh, website uh, uh, information here. But let me just quickly uh, show you this video. It will take a minute. Um... Are you able to see it though? The video, Paritosh, is no, video? no, Nancy. It's not, see it. No, it's not. Now, no, still not. It started sharing screen. It's going to take a second to load, I think. Yeah, now? Can you see it now? Yeah, it's visible now. When I entered Ashoka's campus, I was in awe. The campus is full of greenery and the environment makes you want to learn. It's really pretty, huh? My favorite part has to be the library. The library is elegant and classy and I was so excited to go and study there. Every lecture at YSP was so interesting. One of my favorites was the session on Math Meets Economics, where we were taught game theory through an interesting story time that has stuck with me forever.
five days of YSP, Ashoka felt like home, where I cultivated friendships that I treasure to this day. YSP at Ashoka was a very enlightening experience for me. It gave me a true insight as to what college life would be like. I think my favorite part was spending time with my friends. We would be together the entire day, have fun, talk, play games together, and it was a great, very fun experience overall. We learned, we laughed, and we created memories of a lifetime with people I'll never forget. YSP was an enriching program with sessions that provided exposure to a multitude of subjects. And although I learned a lot in the classroom, I learned even more outside of it. Staying on campus at Ashoka University, bonding with other students and learning about each other's hometowns was an added bonus. Thank you Ashoka University for organizing this program for high schoolers. My time spent there will never be forgotten. My experience of the Young Scholars program in Ashoka University was wonderful time. With the friends that I came with and the friends that I made along the way, I got a taste of university life, which made me feel excited to know what was ahead for me and excited to know what kind of college life that I'll be a part of. Thank you. That was so nice. That was a great video too, Nancy. And uh, yeah. really, thanks for taking the time to talk about, you know, uh, the YSP program. Um, you know, as I said before, we've got a you know, number of our students who apply for this and uh, they've, they've had a great experience. Yeah. Um, and I think one of the questions that, you know, someone had was, what's the difference between Horizon and YSP? So we'll get back to that. And then I, sure, want, to, sure. you know, I want you all to definitely talk and address that. Um, yeah. So I'm going to you know, um, ask uh, now in the the lineup, I'm going to ask uh, Atlas University uh, to talk about their program. And then, you know, I know Plaksha and, and Epole are also waiting. So, but lovely to, to see you, Nancy. And thanks for uh, telling us more about YSP. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Dawal, for giving us this opportunity to present this wonderful uh, summer school to the students and giving them the exposure beforehand. So, uh, hi, my name is Mayur and uh, I'm with Atlas Kiltech University taking care of the B.Tech program that we have. Now, uh, apart from the B.Tech program, we have something exciting, really exciting, which is a summer tech school. Now, this is the second year of a summer tech school where it's a 10-day program. I'll just share my screen. Okay, is it visible? Yes, yes. Perfect, perfect. Just give me a moment. Okay, so it's a 10 day summer school in which uh, you're going to learn about artificial intelligence machine learning. Now, today, everyone's talking about artificial intelligence, computer science, machine learning, data science. But what exactly happens in computer science and artificial intelligence, machine learning? That is something the student do not know as of now. Kids, 9th grade, 10th grade, uh, you know, 11th grade, 12th grade, they do use chat GPT. But what is the science behind chat GPT? So this is something that you're going to learn at our Atlas Kiltech University 10-day summer school. So to start with, the eligibility of this summer school is from 9 to 12th grade. And irrespective if you are if you have a math background, if you're from a humanities background or science for that matter, any background, you can definitely get into this particular program. There are two batches. The first batch is from May 20th to May 30th. Second batch is in June 17 to 27 uh, June. The size of the batch is only 30. So we understand that we are teaching the most complex uh, topic as of now and most top topic. Uh, so we want to keep the batch size very small. Uh, this will be the typical day at a summer school. So a student going to come at uh, Atlas. So firstly, Atlas is India's first Kiltech University and first university which is situated in a corporate park. So when you walk into the campus, you are walking into a corporate park. So the students are also going to have an exposure of how 
the corporate world looks like. And nine o'clock we're gonna start with, and then we're gonna end by three thirty. So this is going to the typical timing. This is going Monday to Saturday, Sunday. Uh, if there's a Sunday in between, Sunday is going to be your work from home. Now, what is it that you're going to learn in this summer school? Firstly, while learning artificial intelligence, machine learning, or having some kind of exposure, you should have a good math background. So we are going to build the foundation from day one. So from day one, we're going to teach you math, some probability, some stats, to start off with. Day two, we're going to start off with Python. So Python is, I believe most of the school are offering Python already. And most of the IB schools, they have a subject called AI. So they already know about it. So day two, we're going to start off with Python, Python basics, give them some data types to work on, and they'll do the analysis. Then day three, we are going to teach them how to create art using AI. Because AI is a domain which has been used in all the sectors, rather be it healthcare, retail, manufacturing, everything. So this is one aspect that we are going to cover. Then one fun part is predicting the future. So as we know how stock market works, we are going to give them some real data to work on. And they are going to predict which stock is going to go high based on the probability model. And they are going to create a model. And we've got uh, day five image processing. How does uh, Instagram image enhance by itself? Or what is the technology behind that? Day six, we are going to teach you converging with computers, natural language processing. So this is something that... Uh, you know, it is it is in demand again. So how do machine, when you talk to Alexa, how does Alexa understand what we are talking? And how does Alexa, Alexa respond? Day seven, we are going to talk about computer vision. So computer vision has been used in uh, uh, automotive industry as well. So when you talk about Tesla, when you, you know, excite the kids talking about how you can uh, integrate a camera in a car and how does the camera process its images and gives an output. So this is what something that they're going to work on. So when you talk about computer vision, this is the basic that they're going to learn. This is the foundation that you're going to build in this 10 days. Now, chat GPT, day eight. So chat GPT is something that they're going to learn and in which they're going to understand how to use the chat GPT, how to use this platform to enhance themselves. Just not for fun. It's not just the SOP that we're asking the chat GPT to give, not just an essay, but then what is the right way to use chat GPT and leverage in a day-to-day -day life. Now, what we also want is that basically whatever you've learned in these 10 days, you need to present it also. So we are going to gather everything, whatever you have learned, give them a problem statement, and you need to solve that problem with AI, with using AI tools, whatever you've learned. And then day 10, you're going to present your ideas, how you have solved it. So this is what we have. When you talk about the program fee, the program fee is 25,000 rupees for 10 days. And... Uh, Lunch and breakfast are provided to the student by us. And uh, that's it. In case if you have any question, please feel free to ask. Thank you, Mayur. That was very helpful. Um, so housing is not provided or residential is no, not residential provided. Residential so is a little no. bit more commuter. Okay. Yes. Okay. Apart, from, apart from the tech school, we also yeah. have something known as uh, design summer school. Sure. So yeah, these I, are the, you'll have yes. you'll have two, right? This this so we've got this year, and... this year, uh, Mr. Dawal, we've got three summer school. We've got right. uh, tech, we've got uh, design, and we've got yeah. entrepreneurship the, as well. Correct. Fabulous. Yes. So, so thanks yes. for sharing. No, thanks okay. for sharing all these three. This is this is great information. Um, and and if there's any more questions that you'll have, you can definitely put in the text box. And just reach out to us. I know we are running short of time, and I think we're 
closer towards the end of this, but I'd love to, of course, invite Plaksha, uh, you know, to talk, um, you know, about their programs, and and then after that, uh, Zubin from Ecole. Um, so Priyanka, would you like to go ahead? Yes, sure. Uh, thank you. Great. I'll just uh, quickly share my yeah. screen. Um, hope my screen is visible. Yes, it is. Thank you. Yeah. So, hello, everyone. And uh, thank you, TNI, Mr. Dhawal, for having me here today. Um, I'm Priyanka, and uh, I'm uh, leading the YTS program at Laksha University. Uh, Young Technology Scholars, the YTS program, uh, is a flagship summer program of Laksha. Uh, and uh, it's a two-week immersive program an intense one which provides a flavor of Plaksha's uh, own exciting hands-on and interdisciplinary learning uh, to the high school students, uh, which is from grade 9 to 12. Um, and uh, this is, uh, you know, YTS uh, itself has been designed by our senior faculties uh, from leading universities around the globe, uh, which is in collaboration with alums from top institutes like uh, Stanford, Harvard Business School, UC Berkeley, IITs, and IIMs. And uh, so if the students are curious about uh, artificial intelligence, augmented reality, uh, biological systems, uh, YTS will help you explore the all these nuances of technology, uh, including fundamentals of computation, um, how to, you know, the hardware interfa interfaces, uh, then biosensing, uh, programming, uh, through interactive lectures, seminars, and hands-on projects. Um, our curriculum is uh, crafted uh, in such a way uh, uh, that it has four parallel tracks running. Uh, the first one are the preliminary uh, lectures uh, by uh, global academicians, um, where uh, we just don't uh, teach like a, a typical lecture. It's more of hands-on learning, more of doing than uh, a typical uh, lecture that we see. So there are global challenges uh, that they talk about. And uh, the objective of this lecture is to help students understand uh, you know, why of every problem and teach them how to approach the problem uh, from different perspectives uh, and how they can implement these strategies to solve the real world problems, which we offer them in the later half of the uh, program. Uh, the second uh, track is about exercises. So it's about how, uh, you know, before deep driving into the complex projects in the second half, uh, second, uh, you know, week of the program, uh, students uh, shall be learning the fundamentals of programming, uh, also how to build uh, with microcontrollers and so on. Uh, so uh, these, uh, you know, are catered in the first uh, week of the program. Uh, then come the core. Then comes the core of the uh, program, which is hands-on projects. Uh, so it's about, uh, you know, uh, where students are exposed to a variety and array of project areas, uh, like we had biology, uh, robotics. Uh, game designing, cryptography, um, as some of those in the previous uh, YTS cohorts. And they get to choose uh, from uh, one of them and work in depth on a particular project. Uh, so uh, to give you some examples of the exciting projects that they have built, uh, you know, some of them being how to uh, build an ECG machine, um, a self-balancing robot. Uh, then there was tele-operated, uh, you know, rover uh, then intelligent game designing and cryptography. So um, the fourth and the important track that uh, again uh, is about uh, uh, more, uh, you know, uh, holistic kind of a learning. So uh, they just don't, uh, you know, learn through technology. They also learn through peers and industry leaders. So the fourth track is uh, interaction with mentors and, uh, uh, you know, uh, leaders from, a different diverse background so uh, who help them share their journey uh, and help student understand uh, you know how or what it takes to meet their goals um so previous in previous cohorts students have been interacting uh, with leaders from space startups um uh, non-profit organizations then technology industry uh, fintech uh, 
film industry and even educational industry institutions. Um, so I, I was going to ask, uh, yeah, that's the yeah. slide where if you have like just the number of days and the fees and stuff, that would be great, Priyanka. Sure, sure. So uh, just quickly, uh, we've been, uh, this is the, you know, we have completed sixth edition already, uh, starting in 2018, and we had 200 students on campus uh, from 45 cities uh, uh, across India, from 123 schools and 30% female participation. Uh, this year, uh, definitely, uh, we're going to go bigger, and we're looking at more than 200. And uh, it is a complete residential program. We'll be hosting this from June 9th to 23rd at Laksha University campus itself. Um, and um, you know, uh, the, we have we are currently rolling. Uh, you know, applications are rolling currently, and we have uh, uh, you know the program details are there on the website. I'll host it on the chat as well. Uh, just quickly, uh, there's a video if it's possible to uh, you know share and summarize is, the. Interview. Is it is it a is it a minute or two? Not not very long. <laughs> Okay. I'll, I'll, yeah, I can stop sure. in between. Uh, yeah, but, sure, uh, sure. Thank you. This is the sixth edition of YTS, and it's the first time we are holding YTS at the Plaksha University campus in Mohali. Uh, this is a great opportunity for students to discover how to build stuff that is relevant to our society. At YTS, our endeavor has been to pick up problems that are relevant, that translate into real product and have an impact on people's lives. For many of the students, this is the first time they will be building something end-to-end. -end. YTS was conceived six years ago to capture the spirit on understanding how to teach the kids that disciplines are integrated and how they come together to solve really complex real-world situations which means bringing together knowledge of various subjects, mechanical engineering, computing, electronics, and applying it to a problem that currently is a live problem out there. Hello everyone, today we present to you the AgBot. The AgBot is a four-wheeled rover that is remote controlled and can be made to move around the field. Uh, it has a camera sensor that can detect the amount of the number of plants in an image and it can also connect to various Bluetooth enabled sensors across the field and gather data about the field. Uh, we've used components like an Arduino, a Raspberry Pi, two motor drivers and four motors to create this project. Uh, yeah. yeah, so uh, Thanks. this is one Thank of the friend. projects uh, that students have made in previous cohort. Thank you, uh, Mr. Dhawal. I understand there's a time constraint. But there lovely. is a time constraint, but, but it, it was so amazing to see all, you know, everyone have this video played because I, I know it means a lot to the parents and students who are coming to really watch this and, and it makes it more interesting and engaging. So I really appreciate that. It's just that we're short of time. Uh, but but I think these these serve as very important, and I definitely recommend them to go online and actually see all of these because they they're there on all the university websites. Uh, but thank you again, thanks Priyanka so much, um, and thank I would like to have Zubin come and talk um, about uh, Epol Intuit. Thank you, Priyanka. Firstly, a very good evening to everyone out here. I think uh, all the presenters of the top universities really did a very amazing job because. Not only you guys communicated about, you know, who you are, where you come from and the kind of ethics that we're developing in the education industry, especially looking at Paritosh, Pariju and, uh, you know, Nancy. I, it was really brilliant to see how beautifully they presented the Young Scholarship Program. So kudos to everyone. Um, to all people attendees out today, my name is Jubin Thakur. I'm the Associate Director for Outreach at Ecole in Tweet Lab. Uh, they always say, uh, last but not the least, so here I am. I am not going to take anything more than five minutes for everyone out here today. Um, Ecole Intuit Lab is the only French design school in India. 
And uh, yes, we do offer summer school, which is aimed for young students to develop that mind, whether they are a design aspirant. Uh, today's generation is more beyond than art, science and commerce, engineering, architecture, uh, economics, uh, psychology, sociology. They really want to develop something that they want to get into after five years down the line that they expect their life to be. So here we are. We are one of the most creative schools. We are number two design school in France, top five graphic and digital school in India. So for 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th and 12th, somebody who wants to explore their creative side, this is the place for you to come for two weeks at our Mumbai campus. And we have that. For students beyond 12th, we have only three undergraduate programs, which I have shared the link in our chat box that you can click on and have a look. We also have one postgraduate programs for students who've done their bachelor's. Uh, Dawal, thank you so much for inviting me uh, to create a lot of noise about, um, you know, how we can create more um, genre about the summer schools in terms of being in India. Yes, a lot of do international schools require students to be from ninth and they need a lot of verticals towards their SOP, the LOR, the applications. Uh, but think about for a child who's just growing up and developing some competencies to understand what he actually wants to be, right? That sometimes becomes very challenging. So what we do is we invite students from grade 8 to grade 12 to come and put everything on the table and try and identify to who they are and what they want. And if this is really the skills that they possess that they want to develop more competencies on. Um, so now we are introducing the summer school uh, 2024 from Ecole Intuit Lab Mumbai. The topic for this summer school this year is called From Basics to Brilliance. The reason uh, it's basic to brilliance is because when you are young, you're new to the industry, you're unaware about things and you want to come and explore. So from the time you come to the summer school to the, to the time you become brilliant through our industry expert and how we elevate your thought process, your creative skills is something that we believe in. This summer school is technically for two weeks, which is only in Bombay campus. Ecol Intuit Lab has four campus, which is in East, West, North, South. Uh, when we talk to the city, it's Mumbai, Delhi, Bangalore, Calcutta. The summer school is currently uh, on from 6th to 7th of May, which is a comprehensive skills where we are conducting five workshops. The very first workshop is mentioned about exploring your visuality. Whether you belong to any disciplines of the education, what's your visuals like is something that we are trying to uh, inculcate in day one and day two. Day eight, uh, eighth and ninth and 10th of May are the three days that we play with illustrations and animations. Be it any disciplines of education that you go forward for, it's very important how you illustrate yourself through the mode of communication and through handwritten. And that is what we do. Illustrations and animations definitely portray your skills, whether you understand whether you are a creative person or not, and whether you should pursue designing skills. 13th of May, we are going with hand lettering. This is very important because typography is the kind of language that we use, whether we talk verbally, whether we type verbally. Even though you look at the screen of every individual present here, it's versatility that you can see. And that's what is typography. And that's what we like to indulge in so students will be more involved in giving their disciplines in terms of writing 14th and 15th of may uh we are putting some character design into it where even though it's more about prototyping stereotyping more about creating your unique characters it's more about your characteristic skills through an individual that you are coming and displaying at the program Looking at the last day that we look at, which is 16th and 17th, I know a lot of my peer colleagues have already talked about uh, AI. And I think this is the need of the hour because when we look at this Gen Zs who are into production, they are more smarter and technologically advanced than me talking right now about AI. You know, you talk about Apple right now on this webinar, they will actually Google Apple and will have an array of essays and descriptions about what an Apple is and how to grow about it. And that's what artificial intelligence is doing to us. However, keeping in mind that even AI is designed by a human, it didn't fall out of proportionate, right? So how we develop our creative thoughts and how we indulge technology 
and how we are introducing our capabilities in terms of utilizing this modern way of living is something that we are going to teach on the 16th and 17th. This is scheduled again from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday to Friday at a call in tweet lab Prabhadevi campus in Bombay. The fee, if you look at, is very minimalistic. It's for 15,000 because the cohort size that we believe in at a call in tweet lab double and the delegates today is not more than one is to 30 ratio. We would love to have quality crowd rather than quantity crowd to produce the best in the industry. And just in case if people are looking out at more uh, information regard, uh, regarding the summer school program, I've already mentioned the details in the chat box. You can feel free to call, message, text. Um, please feel free to reach out to us. We'll be more than happy to discuss more about this. I know in due respect to the time right now that we are overdue, I would like to end right now. I've already mentioned the video description in the chat box, the registration form, and along with more details about the summer school in Inbox. Kindly feel free to have a look at that. And uh, Dawal, you can always connect people to reach out to us and we'll be more than happy to share more information. And that's all I have today. I think uh, no matter you choose uh, technology, science, uh, architect, you choose engineering, you talk about economics, you talk about any center stage of education, every brain has two sides of it, whether it's creative or non-creative. And that's what we need to function. Summer schools are meant to involve yourself, to understand where you should be leading yourself and how you should be leading. It's not more about preparing yourself beyond the world. It's more about preparing yourself to understand whether you are desired to be at a certain belief, certain designation, certain places that your mind is playing with. Definitely 8, 9, 10, 12, you cannot expect to be a doctor, but definitely you can plan to be a doctor and find the right resources through the right channels. And that's what creative schools are all about. Uh, it's all about having fun. It's all about coming together. It's all about building friends, collaborating with different mindset, working with different people, understanding where you stand and how you would want to lead yourself. So that's what I'm going to leave everyone with. Double, thank you so much for giving this time. And I think uh, just have fun when you come to summer school. Don't exaggerate too much on anything which is beyond than learning. I think fun with learning is something at the age group un un under 18 that you should have. Beyond 18, you become matured. You understand what you need to do. But uh, when we talk about summer school, it's a school. It's a summer break. It's all about coming out, finding yourself, having fun, making friends and planning yourself much better with the help of senior leaders like you who are available today through your teachers, through your counselors. And all I say, Dawal, is have fun when you come to summer school. Explore yourself. And uh, I say a big thank you for everyone to be out here today. Thank you. Thank you, Zubin. Thank you. And thanks to everyone else. I know there was a question um, uh, to Ashoka about the difference between the YSP and Horizons. And um, if you want to take that, uh, you know, Nancy and Paratosh, I'll, I'll leave it to you all. Sure. Thanks. Uh, thanks so much, Dawal, for that question. So, I think the biggest difference is that uh, Horizons um, uh, is an online program and all the courses happen online. But as Paritosh said, that it's not the typical, you know, understanding of an online course. It's live and um, it's very, very interactive, project-based, collaborative learning, peer learning, and mentorship with um, teaching fellows. Um, YSP, on the other hand, is a residential. It happens on Ashoka campus, um, and it is a five-day or a two-week program, depending on which program you want to take. Um, again, Horizon courses, if you take up, say, a course in uh, sustainability and environment, or you take, a, take up a course in, uh, say, game theory, both of the courses that we are offering this summer, you will actually, uh, you know, really... Uh, get an exposure to these concepts uh, and, and learn them in deeper detail, while YSP is a much wider exposure 
uh, to various disciplines, to, you know, the interconnections between these disciplines. As I said, the foundation program is really an introduction to the best of Ashoka. It also introduces you to the idea of an interdisciplinary and a transdisciplinary education, leaves you with some of the most important thinking styles, what is critical thinking, computational thinking, and so on. Uh, so those are some of the differences, but both the programs help you, you know, understand disciplines and subjects better. They help you uh, plan your career, uh, you know, in a more informed way um, and definitely help you strengthen your, uh, your uh, you know, um, understanding of where you should go next and why. Thank you. Thanks, Nancy. I think that's very helpful. Uh, and I agree. I think that's what I heard from Bharatosh also. And, you know, um, it's so this is not a conventional Coursera course. You know, it's really it's not recorded. It's not pre-recorded. You know, this is something with live sessions. You're really having interactions with others. You're getting an opportunity to engage. Um, and that's really different. Um, so if it's if it's psychology, you're really having a conversation there. Um, Bharatosh, anything that you want to highlight, which, you know, what it is like? Um, you know, when you have these live conversations, are they going to be assignments? You know, anything that you want to talk about? Right. I think we're trying to bring um, a small seminar style discussion as it happens at Ashoka for undergraduates, especially in their first year, to high schoolers. Um, it's it's really like that. Um, and, um, you know, of course, with, with Horizons, you get that aspect of Ashoka, but you don't get the campus aspect. And uh, that's why we also have the YSP program because we wanted to give students an on-campus experience as well. Paritosh, perhaps you can also highlight that uh, uh, the programs differ based on where the students are in their decision-making process specifically. So maybe highlight that aspect of what differentiates uh, YSP from Horizons and vice versa. Sure, absolutely, Ankita. Um, so when you're trying to apply to college, um, you can you, you you can see your journey as a kind of like decision making process where you're you maybe start off with like I don't know at all what I want to do to I sort of know the area in which I want to do my major to maybe I like know my major right or maybe I'm choosing between just two things. Um, if you're at a later stage in that process, Horizons will be particularly beneficial for you. Um, that said, even if you're um, at a later, if you're at a later stage in that process, even YSP could be beneficial for you because it will give you the on-campus experience and Horizons doesn't give you that. Um, but Horizons is designed for you um, to help your decision-making once you're at that stage. Um, and if you um, sort of don't really know what to do, I think the YSP Foundation Program is a particularly great place for you to start uh, because that gives you ex an exposure to the widest range of subjects, um, critical thinking skills, um, and even careers because we bring in a lot of guest speakers. So that that's a, that's kind of what I would say. Ankita, Nancy, do you have anything to add here? That's fine. No, Thanks. I Very think, much. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. I hope it Great, answers the question of the student who posted. <laughs> that's that's I, I, I would I would say that students would actually have otherwise messaged back with something to us, but I don't think they have. So I feel like that question is probably answered at this point. Um, but any... Bhaval, if they reach yeah. out to you, uh, you know, with similar questions, just feel free to uh, absolutely. You know, connect yeah, yeah, them definitely. with us. And that's that's the first thing we're going to do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, I think it's very important that, that we get across our questions to, you know, um, to any of you. Uh, I know with Paratosh and uh, and you, Nancy, we we definitely make sure that they can get across. And we do that, you know, every time. We already have a few students who who applied, and you know, they're coming, you know, your way. So, um, and that happens traditionally across the year. You know, we see a number of students, and uh, it's just exam time. So I feel like you know we want to do the session and give an opportunity, but you know, January was a lot more. Just right now, you know, some of them are tensed. What's going to happen on Monday? Or, or the next week with their exams. But I think quite a few parents are here and I, I really appreciate the time that they've taken out to come and really engage and, and have this uh, conversation and listen to you all. Um, so, uh, you know, I think that's great. So I think Saket, are you still here? Because I hope that that questions were answered for you. Uh, I know Salim also had this question. So I feel, I hope Salim, their questions were answered. Yeah, I think they are. There you go. So you have a thanks as well. Um, any other questions for any of the other schools? Uh, Flame, um, 
you know, Epole Infuse, um, Atlas, Plaksha. Uh, I think all of you all have fantastic programs, and I'm just so glad to see that every year I see an improvement. Um, and you know, um, of course, with YSP, I've seen so much more that that is being offered as well. Um, so I think everyone's doing so many different things, and um, I feel parents and students are spoiled for choice now. Um, so I think, um, given that we don't have any other more questions, I feel um, you know, a thank you to all of uh, the participants, and and thank you for all the university representatives and. We had a wonderful session. I know that we have a uh, next session, which is going to be on study in Japan. And if everyone wants to register for that, uh, there's a link already uh, that's shared by um, Abe on the, you know, on the text box. And if you all want to just register for that, um, you know, feel free. We, we do at least two to three sessions a, a month where we talk about different, um, you know, um, you know, different universities, different programs and, uh, that way you can learn a little bit more uh, about what's really happening around there. So uh, look forward to, to seeing you all in the next session. And thank you, everyone, for attending. Thank you, Pochaba, and thank you, the TCC team. Thanks, Sarval. Thank thank so thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Sarval. This was very interesting. Thank Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Likewise. Thank you.